This video is brought to you by Absolute Ambition Memoria, an exciting new fantasy novel inspired by old school RPGs and available free to new Audible.com members. To the people of Planet Pearl, Vim is everything. Vim is an energy source that exists deep beneath the surface. When the people of Pearl die, their Vim is returned to the soil and each new baby takes a little back out. The company of Megacorp wants to change this natural process forever. Cirrus Stark is determined to stop them. Poor old Bill Clinton's found himself in a bit of an awkward spot with regard to the hashtag MeToo movement recently. Thanks to a slightly amusing series of events that started a long, long time ago in what people referred to as the 90s. <laughs> So it's the 90s and President Bill Clinton's got himself a new intern, a dumpy, dumpy little grunter by the name of Monica Lewinsky, who fairly quickly developed a bit of a crush on the new boss. Then one day when they found themselves alone in the Oval Office, this happened. I remember thinking to myself, okay, well this is it. If, the, if this is going to happen, I mean, maybe you should let him know you're interested. So I, so I blurted out. You know, I have a crush on you. <laughs> Following that conversation, old Bill got a heap of blowjobs from Monica Lewinsky during a secret two-year sexual kind of sort of relationship. You have said that oral sex is not a sexual relationship. That you call it what? Messing around. Messing around. Okay. Pulling around. So then how would you describe the relationship? I mean, would you say that it was non-sexual? No. I was able to, in my mind, say we didn't have a sexual relationship because we didn't have intercourse. But that it was a, in, in, in a sort of loose way, it was a sexual relationship. The two were outed after Clinton was accused of sexual harassment by another broad by the name of Paula Jones. <coughs> Clinton denied that any such relationship ever existed. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. But eventually had to eat his own words, thanks to a pretty funny set of circumstances surrounding a blue dress. The famous blue dress. What dress? <laughs> the dress that Bill Clinton jizzed on. What did you think the stains were? At first I didn't know and I thought, oh, this is dirty, that's weird. And then it came to my mind that the last time I had worn it was when... I sucked off the president and he jizzed all over me. And I thought, oh. That's jizz. Fast forward to March of this year and Vanity Fair publishes an op-ed written by Monica Lewinsky. Just four years ago, in an essay for this magazine, I wrote the following. My boss took advantage of me, but I will always remain firm on this point. It was a consensual relationship. Any abuse came in the aftermath when I was made a scapegoat in order to protect his powerful position. I now see how problematic it was that the two of us even got to a place where there was a question of consent. Instead, the road that led there was littered with inappropriate abuse of authority, station and privilege, full stop. Now at 44, I'm beginning, just beginning, to consider the implications of the power differentials that were so vast between a president and a White House intern, I'm beginning to entertain the notion that in such circumstances the idea of consent may well be rendered moot. He was my boss. He was the most powerful man on the planet. He was 27 years my senior, with enough life experience to know better. He was, at the time, at the pinnacle of his career, while I was in my first job out of college. I, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to the hashtag Me Too and Time's Up heroines. They are speaking volumes against the pernicious conspiracies of silence that have long protected powerful men when it comes to sexual assault, sexual harassment and abuse of power. The affair with Monica Lewinsky, her Vanity Fair op-ed and the hashtag Me Too movement came up last week during a fairly awkward interview Bill Clinton did with NBC. I loved what Starbucks did last week um, over civil rights, you know, closing down. The times, I, I like the Me Too movement, it's way overdue. I think that it doesn't mean I agree with everything. I still have some uh, 
questions about some of the decisions which have been made. But time's up yeah. is important too because they talk about how creating a culture in which there are no more victims. And so I was thinking, I wonder whether Starbucks is a good model for companies to deal with uh, trying to root out harassment, discrimination, unwanted approaches. Last question here. I, be, because one of the things that this, this Me Too era has done, it's forced a, a lot of women uh, to speak out, women who feel emboldened now. One of those women, Monica Lewinsky, she wrote in an op-ed um, that the Me Too movement changed her view of sexual harassment. Quote, he was my boss. He was the most powerful man on the planet. He was 27 years my senior with enough life experience to know better. He was at the time at the pinnacle of his career while I was in my first job uh, out of college. Looking back on what happened then through the lens of Me Too now, um, do, you, do you think differently or feel more responsibility? Um, no, for... I felt terrible then. And I came to grips with it. Did and you ever apologize no, to and her? No, yes, and nobody believes that I got out of that for free. I left the White House $16 million in debt. But you typically have ignored gaping facts in describing this, and I bet you don't even know them because, so I am not going there. This was litigated 20 years ago. Two thirds of the American people sided with me. They were not insensitive to that. I had a sexual harassment policy when I was governor in the 80s. I had two women chiefs of staff when I was governor. Women were overrepresented in the attorney general's office in the 70s for their percentage in the bar. I've had nothing but women leaders in my office since I left. You are giving one side and omitting facts. Mr. President, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to present a side. I'm not, no, no, I'm, you asked me if I agreed. The answer is no, I don't. And I, well, I asked if you'd ever apologized, and you said you had. I have. You've apologized to her. I apologize to everybody in the world that long. But you didn't apologize to her, at least according to, to folks that we've talked to. There was never a, an apology. I made. have not talked to her. Do you I, feel I like you owe her an apology? No, I do. I, I, I do not, I have never talked to her, but I did say publicly on more than one occasion that I was sorry. Okay. That's very different. Oof. So we've got Monica Lewinsky, by the way, didn't she improve with age, saying, you know what? Hashtag me too has made me realize that I wasn't even in a position to give consent. So Bill Clinton pretty much raped my face. And at the same time, Bill Clinton, being a Clinton, is pretty much obligated to cheerlead for the hashtag me too movement. I still believe this me too movement is long overdue, necessary, and should be supported. Isn't that awkward? Still, probably not as awkward as the next time you see your totally progressive social justice activist feminist ally cousin wearing your fetching new t-shirt or hoodie from the Bearing Merch store, where everything is 20% off for the next week. Link in the description. Recession, session, session.